Now, have you thought about getting into home automation, but the whole idea and the costs involved with doing it has scared you away? Today I'm going to show you a way to get up and running fast, very low cost, possibly even saving you money with things that you most likely already have in your house. Whenever someone asks me about home automation and how I got started, the truth is it was years ago and I've bought a lot of things since then. But I've helped friends get going since then and one of the easiest ways to do it is to tap into something you might already have in your house. Most of the people who I've ever helped set up their home automation system have a home security system. Very often it's a DSC, uh, usually power series. Um, I believe Honeywell, other ones work as well, but the DSC is the most common. Very often it's the system that was installed free in your house, uh, probably came with some sort of monitoring contract you had to do for a year or two, and after that you've been paying the fees ever since. So the nice thing about this system is it consists of a ton of sensors. Um, you have door open and close sensors, very often window open and close sensors, uh, possibly motion sensors around your house, glass break sensors, some people have them hooked up to the garage doors, fire, smoke alarms, all of that is connected to this system. So why not tap right into that and start your home automation off with that? So there's a really easy way to do this. This is the uh, Invisalink 2DS and they have two models of this. Uh, one of them is a serial port, one of them is an uh, Ethernet connection. The Ethernet connection is the newer one. Um, I've worked with both in the past, but the Ethernet one is definitely the simplest one to do. It is very easy to connect to your uh, DSC alarm system. You're not voiding any warranties. It's actually something that is a product endorsed by DSC. Um, and it's used in usually larger scale operations, but easy enough for us to tap in and use at home too. Now, essentially what this does is it acts as a keypad. Only instead of having a physical keypad, it takes the information that it exchanges and it exchanges it with a computer system. So, really easy to do. It's essentially just a 12 volt uh, system, so it's very low voltage. You're not going to get hurt by working around in there. If you want to feel safe, you can definitely disconnect the power and you can disconnect, disconnect the battery. Uh, I believe that's actually the recommended solution. I've definitely done it otherwise in the past. And essentially, there's just little uh, wires that you need to connect. Um, they're going to plug into the same place that your uh, keypads plug into within the DSC system. Once that's done, you plug it into your Ethernet. It's going to grab an IP address off your router, and you're up and running. With that IP, you can log into this device directly, um, and you can see some information about your system. You can see different zones uh, within your system and different devices that you have, and what their current status is. What I want to do today is jump into my uh, current favorite solution for home automation, and that is OpenHab. I have a video linked below if you want to see more about setting that up, but it's really easy to do. You can get it up and running, I'd say, five, ten minutes max on any piece of computer hardware you may have in your house, including a Raspberry Pi. And from there, we can tap into the logic of this device to use any of the sensors connected to your alarm system as devices which you can monitor, you can trigger, and you can control. So for example, when I come home at night, as soon as we open the first door while the alarm is armed, it turns on lights. So that obviously we can help our, find ourselves into the house and disarm the alarm system. Now as soon as you type in a code and you disarm it on the alarm system, I bring up some other lights within the house and I turn on the music and I can do different things depend, depending on what time of day it is. If it's 12 o'clock at night, I definitely don't want the music blaring, so I have a statement that skips that. If it's in the afternoon, let's turn some music on and, and add a little bit of life to the house. So, endless possibilities with this. Super, super easy way to uh, get set up. This device, uh, I'll provide the links down below, but it's between 50 and 100 bucks at any given time, whether you find it on sale or not. Um, easy to set up and the added benefit with it is once you're up and running you can actually monitor your home system yourself so you can choose to continue to pay your contract and let your alarm company monitor it as well or you can cancel that contract pocket that money every month and I believe you can actually monitor your system even better yourself um, couple that together maybe with some cameras and things like that you'll know exactly what doors have been opened, what motion detectors have gone off if you have any nest cameras or any other type of camera you can take a look and see what's actually happening in your house and 
make the same decisions that the security company would do, either phone the police or take other actions based on what's going on in your house. In the past, we used to have it monitored by a security system, and to be honest, uh, nine times out of ten, they were false alarms for one reason or another, and uh, you know what? Definitely, ever since I've done this, I've been happy I monitor the system myself, and I pocket that 30 bucks a month, and I don't pay it off to someone else to essentially just monitor through my phone line. So, what I'm going to do now is take a quick look into OpenHab and see if we can't show you how to set up a rule. Again, super simple. Give it a try. Best way to get up and started without buying a whole bunch of sensors. All right, here we are. We have uh, pretty much my rules, and there's a whole bunch down here. I'll go through the uh, through what a lot of these do in different videos. But right now, the main one I'm going to look at is the DSC rules here at the top. Um, if you haven't seen the format of a rule in OpenHab before, if this is your first time looking at them, what this is is a rule file. I tend to keep them uh, segregated. You could technically have everything in one file, but I choose to, to break them out a little bit. Um, just for organizational purpose and they're very simple statements this is an example of one here and all this is essentially saying is it has a rule name which starts the rule and I called this one DSC exit delay the only thing here is you want to make sure that every rule you make has a different name and uh, following the logic it says when and then I say item which is what is it I'm watching well I want to watch the DSC partition exit delay um, so this is a part of the sensor that you'll create when you add it to OpenHab and I say when it changes to on meaning when the exit delay has turned on then all I want to do is send a notification to my pushover app which is a little notification app I use on on my phone and I just send a notification telling me that the alarm has entered exit delay and that's it that's uh, rule always ends with end and that's essentially the simplest form of a rule right there um, you can put comments in your rule files by putting a two forward slashes and essentially here at the bottom here I have just a kind of I put a comment in my rule file so I can remember that zero is disarmed one equals armed away two equals arm stay three equals away no delay and so far um, these are all just things that are going to help me when I come back and refer to this in the future now the main rule that I have here at the top is rule DS alarm modes so this is basically what I want to do when the modes change so when item DSC partition R mode changed. So whenever the mode that it's in has changed, and that'll equal these down here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, um, then I want it to do something. So the first thing I do is I've broken it off into a couple of if statements. So if you're familiar with if statements, um, this is how it's written. If something, and then you do an open bracket, you put the details what you want to do in there, and you close it with a bracket. So this one might seem a little bit confusing at first, but it's not trust me most of this was copy and paste from what I found um, so what I'm saying here is if the DSC partition mode is equal to zero which we decided down here at the bottom was disarmed um, then what I want to do is send an alert to me using pushover alarm disarmed and here's where I have a little bit of logic in it um, if night state is equal to on meaning as if it's night time I have a comment there reminding myself what that is um, and then I check if uh, the hour of the day is greater than 8 and the hour of the day is less than 23 and if it's Christmas time there's a little bit extra here then turn on my Christmas trees um, otherwise it's going to pretty much ignore that then I do the check the hour again and I say if the hour is greater than 8 and it's less than 22 10 o'clock at night I want it to turn on my music and the third thing I do is I say if the hour is greater than 7, 19 or 7, and less than 23. I want it to turn on a light upstairs. Uh, this is actually a lava lamp we have upstairs, and we just turn it on, let it start heating up. And uh, that's pretty much it. And then the only second part of this rule is if night state is off, meaning if it's during the day, it's not night, then as long as the hour is greater than 8 o'clock in the morning, I don't want the music turning on at 6 or 7 in the morning. As long as it's greater than 8, then let's turn that music on, and that's it. So what that part of that rule takes care of right there is anything that's going to happen when the alarm is disarmed. So whether or not I had it in night mode or away mode, those are the options it can do. And you can think of hundreds of different things that you could do here. Now, you come down here and it's a little bit simpler. So I have if DSC mode partition mode is state 1, which again coming to the bottom, 1 is armed away, meaning we're leaving the house. This one's really simple. I send a notification saying the alarm is now in away state. 
so I get a pop-up or a message on my phone. I call the script turn off all the inside lights. I call a script called turn off all the music and I call a script turned called off outside back lights. So any of the outside lights in the backyard are turned off. And that's pretty much the simple part of that. Next one is state two, which is arm stay. So this one is, where'd I go now? State two. This one just says if it goes into stay mode, pretty much the same. I send a notification, our alarm stay. I call the script inside lights off. Um, I call the script off music and I call the script off backlight. So pretty much the same as leaving. This is typically done like before we go to bed at night and this way it just shuts down most of the house. Um, takes a minute to get into this which is actually perfect so as soon as I'm about to go to bed I just hit that stay button and it shuts everything down. Uh, the next one is three and four which we really don't use but I just have some notifications in there to let me know if anyone happens to do it. So that's pretty much it for, for uh, changing states. Um, the other one that I have is when we return. So this one here, what this does is rule entry delay. So this is when the alarm is alarmed. This is the time between when I open the door and disarm the alarm. So item, if the DSC partition entry delay changed to on, meaning someone has entered and it's got that 30 seconds or 60 seconds delay, what I want it to do is if it's night, say it is on. So if it's nighttime, turn on the stair lights, turn on the kitchen counter lights, and send a notification say alarm is on. Final ones I have is exit delay which is the same thing when you hit that delay or when you hit that exit on your alarm when you're running out of the house you've got that 60 seconds this just sends a notification for me and the final one I have here is if the alarm is sounding or if it's going off I have it send me an alert saying it's going off and that is pretty much it. So I hope you guys find this video useful um, I'm going to try to put out some more. This was one I wanted to do for a while because I think it kills a couple birds with one stone. It gets people their first step into home automation without having to go out and buy a ton of different sensors. It allows you to work with something that's already in your house. It gives you a stab at working with OpenHab, um, setting up rules. And by the way, you can do this with SmartThings. You can do it with many of the other ones. I've done it with Vera in the past. I've done it with SmartThings. And I've even done it with custom solutions in the past. So it's a very customizable tool. I just find OpenHab is the easiest right now to do it with. Maybe what I'll do is make another video in the future. If I see in the comments people want to know how to do it with SmartThings or you want to know how to do it with other ones, I can show you how to do it there. Anyway, if you like this video, thumbs up would be great. Subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell below, that way you get notified with anything new I put out. Love to see some discussion in the comments. If there's something here that you feel I uh, was wrong or incorrect about, please let me know. Something else you'd like me to talk about, again, the comments are a great place to do that. I'm hoping to build a community here where we can all learn from each other. Thanks and I'll see you in the next video.